Hi guys! Zafod here with my weekly comic review blog. Um, some of you may know on Tuesdays I post my review of the comics that I've read for the day so that way on Wednesday on New Comic Book Day maybe you guys will have a little bit more information um, about what's new, what's out, um, or maybe you just like hearing me talk or you're bored or something. Whatever brings you here I'm happy to see you. So um, let's get started. Um, first off I'd like to talk about a couple new trades coming out this week. First one's actually a hardcover. It's a recollected edition of this book here, Day Tripper, by um, these awesome guys, Fabio Moon and Gabriel Ba. Um, this graphic novel is insanely good. It's incredibly moving. I was sobbing my way through it. It's really, it gets at your heartstrings. It's, um, it's a story of one man goes through his life, every issue it shows um, a different instance of a different point in his life, the different loves in his life, and the possible deaths that he may have had during his life as well. It's incredibly profound, really touching. I suggest all of you read it. Um, if you haven't, you know, you can pick up the paperback. It's 20 bucks. Um, the new hardcover's out. I think it's 35. I'm actually going to be upgrading to the hardcover because I love this book so much and I love hardcovers. I'm such a sucker. I am their target audience for these things. Um, second one out, a little bit on a light, more bleh, more lighthearted note. Itty bitty Hellboy's out today, which is awesome. That is, ah, uh, it's Art Balthazar and Franco, delightful team. The people who brought you Tiny Titans and who brought um, Action Cat, the new thing. Sorry, Captain Action Cat. I apologize. Um, which is another one out today by them. They're a really, really cute team. I don't have kids, but I'm a child, so I read them anyway. Um, but yeah, Itty Bitty Hellboy. They also kind of a Hellboy, um, Itty Bitty Hellboy plush that came out t tomorrow. Comes out tomorrow. Um, which is freaking adorable, and it actually stands up, which those plushes never do. So I'm actually pretty impressed with the craftsmanship on that one. Anyway, to the single issues of the week, I have first off... First thing I read was Translucid here. This is a six-issue mini put out by Boom. It's by Claudio Sanchez of Coheed and Cambria, writer of the Amory Wars as well, and his wife, Chandra Eckhart. Um, I actually got to meet them both at Comic-Con. They're both super sweet, and they're going to have a baby soon, and, you know, it's really exciting. But this is a really cool comic. It is um, about a... There's a villain. There's a, His name's The Horse. If you look at the silhouette here, you can kind of see the horse in the city itself. He has been released from prison, and he is um, arranging a scenario to um, reunite with his other half, the superhero of the city. Kind of plays on the villain-hero relationship. It's really cool. I'm intrigued to see. The horse is very unusual. It reminds me kind of of Dr. Horrible and Bad Horse, but um, completely different villain there. Um, for once, it's actually a person. Um, but yeah, it's really good. I really enjoyed it. So um, that's the new, uh, new number one to check out, potentially. Second thing I read here, um, Batman Eternal number two. As you can see here on the cover, we have one Jim Gordon. Oh god, I'm pointing right at his crotch. Jim Gordon. Um, he is in cuffs here um, after the fallout of last week's issue. This is a weekly title coming out brand new. Um, it's really good. They are really getting off to a really lots of release. Um, it's starting with a bang. They It's hard to keep readers on a weekly comic because it is a little bit of a dig in the pocketbook, but these guys are not fucking around. This is really, really good. I'm enjoying the hell out of it. And next week, next week, guys, issue three is the debut, technical debut issue of Stephanie Brown in the DCU, other than Batman 28, where you have a little glimpse peek at her. I'm so excited. Yay. Not this week. Next week. It's going to be great. I'm really really hoping they do it justice. But Scott Snyder says he loves writing her, so I'm really, really optimistic. Okay, then we have Morning Glories. Um, so kind of a crazy moment for me personally. Um, Joe Eisma, the artist on the series, started following me on Instagram, and I freaked the fuck out. It was so cool. Um, yeah, it, I've been reading the series since issue one. It's one of the first store, store, st ah, one of the first series that I started picking up since I started to get into comics a little bit more seriously. So that was kind of a big, oh my god, fangirl moment. Um, there's a lot of crazy shit going on in this issue, but there's never not a lot of crazy shit going on in Morning Glories. This is a series that is worth reading and then rereading and rereading. Because every time you read it, you pick up on something else 
that happened. Oh, oh, this is a reference to issue two when this happened, or oh, it, this is a parallel to this. There's so many links in this series. It is so brilliantly done, but you really should put forth the effort to, you know, go back and reread it and, you know, pick up some of those gems and those Easter eggs because they really do make the series. And there's a lot, a lot that goes on here that's not apparent if you don't, you know, go back and recheck it out. There's actually on Multiversity, they have a Morning Glories Academy. Um, it's a really long, nice article where um, one of the, I guess, journalists on the site, he goes through and he um, compares it to previous issues and he shares his hypotheses and it's it's really cool. It's definitely worth checking out if you're a fan of the series. And, you know, it gives you some things like, oh crap, I didn't remember that. Oh, that's awesome. So it's really good, especially if you're trying to figure out what's going on in there. Um, this is Batman. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. He's pretty cool. Um, so this is Batman number 30. It's a zero year final act. This is not the last issue. This is just leading up into the last arc of the zero year um, storyline. Um, this is really fucking crazy. Um, really good. You know, this, this team on Batman is just so solid. There's really not really an issue where it sucks. It's always so, so good. And things are getting really crazy. So I'm, oh, I'm really excited for next month. It's, it's, it's cool. Cool stuff's happening. Um, and then after Batman, we have Batwoman. This is, I believe, the second or third issue done by the new team, uh, Mark and Draco, so sorry if I'm saying that wrong, and uh, Jeremy Hahn. Um, I was a little hesitant when they first started up because, you know, changing creators, you know, if it's a series you love, you always have a hard time, and will they do it justice? I'm actually really enjoying this. She's hunting down the wolf spider. He's um, uh, kidnapping all the, kidnapping, he's stealing all these paintings from around Gotham, and it turns out there's something a little bit more to them than just being paintings. Um, really interesting issue. There's a lot of crazy Arkham villains that have a guest appearance. Um, actually a lot of fun. I'm really enjoying it. Um, but what I'm really enjoying, this is um, very quickly becoming one of my favorite reads, um, Ms. Marvel. This is really good. This is issue three out so far, so there's really not that much to catch up on. If you haven't read it, go out to your local comic shop. You don't really need one, two, or three, and then you are all caught up to current. This series is amazing. Um, Kamala Khan here, Ms. Marvel, as it were. She is a young uh, Muslim girl, and she is trying to figure out her personal identity and... Also, she's struggling with the fact that she apparently is now the new Ms. Marvel and trying to get used to her new powers and it's causing a lot of hijinks and, um, you know, can't really explain that to the parents, so, you know, she gets grounded and there's, it's actually, you know, at first I was like worried, you know, I don't want to hear just, you know, another teen angst comic, but this is really good. It has a lot of issues with cultural identity, you know, being a strong, powerful female woman and that's redundant, I'm sorry. Um, but it's really super good. I'm really enjoying it. Um, as far as comics, when it comes out, it's um, the last couple times it, I've been really looking forward to it. And it's consistently, consistently so far, a really good read. Um, next up, we have um, part two of The Hunt for Robin in Batman and Wonder Woman, where Batman goes to the island of the Amazonians hunting after Ra's al Ghul, who has kidnapped the bodies of Talia and uh, Batman's son Damien. Um, so things are getting interesting. I'm really hoping that things are progressing every issue, but I love Damien, so I just want him to come back. Um, and I know that's too easy and you kind of have to um, do stuff with that, but I'm enjoying it. I would like to see uh, a little bit more progression towards, you know, Damien coming back or being dead or the next issue is going to have Frankenstein, which ugh, the last issue where Batman was with Frankenstein trying to find out what happened to Damien did not end so well for Frankenstein. So hopefully he has a little bit better luck this time and does not get chopped up by uh, a grieving kind of crazy father at the time. Uh, next up we have Stray Bullets Killers number two. Um, this is never going to be a cheery issue. Somebody always dies. It kind of shows just the worst of humanity, but it is also uh, actually really well written. I like the art. Um, David LaFam, I'm quickly, um, he's quickly winning me over despite my incredible dislike of the Crossed series. Um, but he's so much more than that. So um, it's really cool, um, interesting, kind of shows you different glimpses into the, um, the worst aspects of humanity, but in a way that really also kind of shows and proves humanity at the same time as well. 
Um, next up, on a much more lighthearted, sometimes you need that, um, we have Captain Action Cat. Um, this is a team up with Dynamite and Dark Horse with the guys who brought you Tiny Titans and Itty Bitty Hellboy. Um, this is Captain Action Cat. That's Action Cat. And this is Evil, Dr. Evil Cat, I think. Um, they are playing, going across the time streams trying to find the evilest cat around. So they meet Silver Age Evil Cat. They meet Golden Age um, Action Cat. Kind of cool playing with the different eras of comic history. I enjoy that. Um, so yeah, and you know, it's just fun. You know, when you're reading things like Stray Bull, it's really depressing as shit. Sometimes you just want something happy and delightful in your life. And that team, they do that. They they bring the delightful in full force. Um, next up, we have the last issue here of Superior Spider-Man. Those of you who were reading my blog understand that I was not reading Superior Spider-Man. I read the first few issues and I really, really dug it. Um, I just have comic ADD and get distracted really easy and forget to pick up issues and then fall behind. That's what happened with this series, despite the fact that what I read was really, really good. I just wanted to pick up this so that way I had... Um, good information leading into Amazing Spider-Man, which is coming up next. Uh, this is a really big issue, just as a heads up. This is a $5.99 issue, but they definitely make it worth it. It is a thicken. It is... Yeah, I don't know how many pages. I forgot to check, but it's it's got substance. It really does. Um, so, Peter Parker's back, and he's dealing with the aftermath of Doc Ock being Spider-Man and having to convince all of his loved ones that, you know, it wasn't really him fucking everything up for so long, but I'm interested to see what's going to happen in Amazing Spider-Man, so that'll be cool. Um, number, another number one this week, we have Sinestra. This is written by Colin Bunn, the guy who brings you Six Gun, Helheim, etc. Um, he is doing very well in comics these days, and a lot of people, at least at the shop that I work at, are, are picking this up just because his name's on it. So if you're Colin Bunn fans, um, definitely check this out. It's a lot of fun. Um, Sinestra's a good character. Um, He's kind of removed himself from all of the Lantern Corps um, groups, and he is, um, someone's trying to convince him to come back, and that's um, kind of the premise of this first issue. Um, it's really good. I'm intrigued. We'll see what happens. Next issue we have here is A Voice in the Dark, um, issue six. I'm really enjoying this series, for those of you who aren't reading it. It's awesome. It is in black and white, but that doesn't mean it's not a great comic. It really, really is. Um, she is currently plotting out um, a murder, which she um, she killed someone in high school, and she hasn't killed anyone since. But she feels that urge raising up, and so she's um, following someone around trying to um, arrange the right time for it, which will be intriguing. I'm. Ugh, we'll see how that goes. It's a town where it just kind of attracts murderers, so it's it's an interesting element in there. Um, next up, we have Harley Quinn issue five. Always just a delightful comic, a lot of fun, very goofy. Um, she is teaming up with this gentleman here, um, Cyborg, and Cy Spaceborg, Cyborgman, I believe is the name. Um, he is having her hunt down some people on his hit list, which is very interesting. A lot of fun. Um, last but not leastly, we have Dead Body Road, Justin Jordan, Mateo Scalera. Great team. This issue has a really cool car chase, which is really hard to pull off in comics, and, and that's actually Justin Jordan comments on that in his afterward about how that never happens in comics. You don't see car chases because it's really hard to, um, you know, show the animation and, you know, build tension when they're just static pages. But Mateo Scalero really knocks it out of the park with that one. So those are my comics for the week. I have read them. They were great. Uh, there really wasn't a bad one among the bunch, which is always a really happy week for me. So I'm off to go take a bubble bath, maybe figure out a YouTube account so I can set up this page here, this video, and then yeah. Um, I don't have a question for the week because I forgot. I don't know if I'm going to keep doing that. Um, we'll see. Um, I hope you guys can bear with my continued video format. I'm sorry for those of you who don't like it. It's a lot more convenient for me, so I'm going to at least stick with it for the time being. I might do um, written here or there just as time allows, so I apologize if that's something that doesn't work for you guys. It just makes my life a lot easier. So, um, yeah, have a good night, guys. Happy comic reading, and we'll see you guys on New Comic Day.